Welcome back. We are playing Victoria 3, and we are going to be playing as the Japanese Shogunate. We are starting a new game. You might be asking, where did your other Japanese game go? Well, I recorded like three videos, and then I was on mute, so um, I'm restarting the run. It's a bit scuffed. So this will be a starting steps video on how to do kind of the strongest, most explosive opening start with Japan that you can. In order to do this, you are going to need to re-roll for a specific thing. We are also going for the Hegemony Achievement, which is available for Japan, but you have to start with the Hegemony um, Start route, I guess, would be the thing in the opening menu. You can't click Sandbox. Okay, onwards. The thing that you need to re-roll for is you need the leader of the party of the Shogunate, not the Shogun himself, to be a Jingoist. The reason why is because he will endorse Professional Army, and he will also endorse Colonialism. <coughs> Let's get into some various things that we're going to be doing. So Japan has some unique situations relative to them specifically as a nation. First is they are isolationist, so no trade with anyone. Second, you have the samurai, which is a unique interest group that has the bakufu uh, ideology. And this ideology is unique because it helps... The samurai will help the landowners support a lot of the things that you need to revoke in order to westernize, slash, do the Meiji restoration, slash, do kind of all the things you want to do. You want to revoke serfdom, change from traditionalism, these are the two big ones, and change your tax method. These are kind of the three really big ones. Okay, in terms of laws, uh, this means that you're going to have a hard time passing stuff, because if we look at abolishing serfdom, the shogunate and the samurai oppose, and this is a 60% opposition, so this is going to be really hard to get through. In order to get this opposition, we are going to, over time, build up the Unholy Alliance. Now, the Unholy Alliance is the Intelligentsia, plus the Industrialists, and this is the quick, uh, this is the alliance that you're going to use to fast-track kind of, uh, reforms through your nation. Okay, so... First step is we're going to bolster them with our authority. Next, we're going to talk a little bit about laws. Okay, the reason we want to be jingoist is because, specifically, most importantly for professional army, uh, if you don't have this, the uh, what is it? The shogunate will oppose. Uh, or they will support peasant levies, so they will uh, oppose the shift to professional army. So it'll be really hard to pass professional army. Peasant levies give 25% strength to the shogunate. This gives 25 to the samurai. And so you want to pass professional army in order to take strength away from the shogunate. The second thing is we want to colonize early. If the shogunate is jingoist, they will support both the colonial reforms and they will be easy to pass through. Okay? So this is kind of what we are doing at the start in terms of our politics. Moving forward, things that we are going to want to keep an eye on and maybe switch to is if we switch from autocracy to landed voting, we always have the legitimacy. So we might be able to pick a spot and switch from this to this because this legitimacy is contingent on the head of state being in government and this legitimacy is not. So at a certain point, we, will, we want to pick a spot where we want to, if we look at government, we want to reform the government, we want to take the shogunate out. We cannot do that while we have both autocracy and monarchy. There's just no way you just lose too much legitimacy, it can't be done. Okay? So that's thing one with all of this. We still have some authority left, and then we're going to talk about the economics as well. But before we do that, we're going to zoom out and do diplomacy because the diplomacy is really quick. You just improve relations with these two guys, and then go to diplomacy, declare your interests. We're going to de declare it in the UK for now, and then we're going to send improved relations to the UK. Okay, next order of business is we are going to try and get as much money as possible, and to do this we are going to do a trick that is going to help out with other things. The first part is we're going to use up the rest of our authority. All right, we're going to put in a bunch of consumption taxes to make more money. Now, the consumption taxes in general, services usually makes a lot, um, the consumption taxes in general are more progressive, whereas raising the taxation level is regressive. What that means is this will affect lower-rung populations more negatively than consumption taxes where you are taxing specifically luxury goods or sin taxes. So we will first put in sin taxes and then luxury taxes. Let's see. 
And keep in mind that we do have, we spent 400 authority first on bolstering the intelligentsia and the industrialists. Okay, so that's thing one with the economics. Thing two is our military starts out, we're not really paying too, too much for the military because we're only paying for military wages. We're not paying for any military goods. But what we're going to do is we're going to delete most of our military. And this has a bunch of, there are a bunch of reasons for doing this. The old shift, you can do five at a time. I think control is 10 at a time, but we're okay with five at a time. And we're going to delete military everywhere, but in our capital of Kansai. While they are in our capital of Kansai, uh, we can't Revolutions, your capital is always on your side, so we will have a little bit of an army that will always support us. The second reason why we want to do this is that we also switch all the ports to anchorages because we do not need any convoys at this point because we're not trading with anyone. Okay. The reason why we want to bring the barracks down to zero is we're going to go into budget, and now we look at the military wages. They're almost nothing. We are going to pay them more but it's just more nothing. And the reason why is we're getting 5% samurai approval, which means that we can do more to piss them off without them radicalizing. And second, them getting so much money, what it's going to do is it's going to make the interest group gain more loyalists because their standard of living will be higher, which will in turn give a ticking sort of benefit to the armed forces. And so hopefully this puts the samurai out of our way. Also, since we rolled a lot of them down, their power, their clout, is going to drop significantly because there aren't a lot of samurai anymore because we deleted them all. So this is going to help a lot. Now we're plus 32k after doing that, and we're not running an ex more expensive taxes. We could run even more and be plus 50k. What the starting for this is we're going to build a bunch of construction, but before that, let's talk about tech. For tech, if you roll a jingoist, which we did, you want to go colonization first because we're just going to go uh, the first reform of what is it standing army professional army and then we're going to go into colonization laws so we want to get our colonization laws as quickly as possible if you do if you don't want to keep rolling for a jingoist you don't need to do this but we're going to go colonization first if you don't feel free to grab a pen and paper because i'm going to talk about all of them after colonization we're going to go cotton gin into lathe the reason we are doing this is so we can switch production methods over to ones that will empower the industrialists. This is kind of the name of the game for empowering the intelligentsia and the industrialists. Okay, after that, we will have a little bit of a choice, but we will probably go either atmospheric engine or academia, depending on how things go. And then after that one completes, we will go the other one. After that, we will want to go either canneries or mechanical tools after we get all of those. The reason being is we are trying to move everything along to production methods that empower the industrialists because they will be getting the ones getting paid. Okay, let's jump into some construction and we will continue to talk about it. So I like to put a lot of construction centers down in the capital and we're gonna make about six. And then after the six construction centers finish, don't mind this, it's because we deleted our army. Uh, after the six construction centers finish, we are going to build two tooling workshops, one in Kanto and one in Kansai. It's important to build them in two different places, otherwise it's going to be really awkward later. Now, the construction centers are going to dramatically increase the demand for both fabric and wood, especially wood. So wood's going to become expensive, and we need to make wood cheap. The way we are going to do this is if we go into the buildings tab and we go to rural, we take a look at the logging camps. Right now they're owned by the merchant guilds, which has shopkeepers. Shopkeepers are primarily petite bourgeoisie, but also a little bit industrialist. What we want is we want them to be privately owned by capitalists who will be predominantly industrialists. It won't tell us now because we can't hover them now. Uh, we because we have none in our nation. In order to turn them capitalists, we have to turn on sawmills, which will make more wood but cost tools. So when our demand for wood increases by the construction center, we don't want to resolve it by keep building more logging camps, at least initially. We can switch to fishing trawlers here. Well, the way we want to resolve it is by switching to sawmills. 
and we can do that by building tools. So you're building tools to increase the wood supply, not logging camps, at least initially. You will need to build a lot more logging camps. And this is kind of the name of the game for the production methods. We always want to keep moving away from merchant guilds and towards privately owned. And also, another reason for wanting colonization early, which is another reason for wanting jingoist, is plantations almost always owned by aristocrats who empower the shogunate. So, in incorporated territory, it contributes a lot to clout when you have plantations and such. In unincorporated territory, it does not. So if you can get an overseas colony, that's generally where you're going to want to build all your farms in order to try and grind down the uh, shogunate as much as possible. Okay, the reason why we are going in the tech, why we are going lathes, early is because we have to use we have to build consumer goods ourselves because we're isolationists and we have to build them all ourselves and we want to switch to dye workshops and lathes and also switch the glassworks over to leaded glass all of this will be help enabled by switching doing these techs earliest so that's why we're prioritizing these techs and then we're going to prioritize atmospheric engine for the same reason if we go to buildings and we go into rural we have no mines. Okay, so we gotta... <laughs> we take a look at the lead mine. Oh, which we can't. We can if we queue one up. Okay. Right now, it's owned by the merchant guilds. Again, shopkeepers. If we switch to atmospheric engine pump, it will no longer be owned by the merchant guilds. So, that's what we're going to do. And we're going to need a lot more tools than just two tooling workshops in order to get this online. But, take a look at the tools. The tools production methods, if we take a look, Merchant Guild owned. If we switch to pig iron tools, they will then be owned by the capitalists, pig iron tools right here. So what we want to do is we want to, instead of getting building a third tooling workshop to get more tools, we're going to get some iron to get more tools. So we're going to go into resources because we will be switching to pig iron tools. Okay, and it's important to note that you have to go in this order because there is this really awkward tension with the way tools work. Uh, tools are needed in order to run iron mines. Okay, <laughs> here we're gonna get the kicker. Iron is needed to run tools with pig iron workshops. This is why we're building two tool workshops so one can make the tools to make the iron and then the other can use the iron to make more tools. And then we have the circle. In order to get the initial demand to get the tooling workshops off the ground, we are going to turn on sawmills in the wood. And after this, we are going to build a bunch more construction centers. Because then we will have more wood. And we are going to spread them out a little bit, but try and focus them where we are going to be building a lot. That should be enough. We can adjust as needed. Okay. We're about to get our first tick on professional army. And it's important to note, this is an enormous chance of passing. This, like, huge endorsement. Uh, it would be higher if the peasants were in the government, but then it would tick slower, I believe. Uh, we could take a look. But we don't want to put the peasants in government because we'd be taking them out anyways. After this, we will be passing one of these colonial affairs. I don't know which one I think is better. I think resettlement is better in the short term, and exploitation might be better in the long term. So I think we're just going to go exploitation. Um, which will make life rougher there. Uh, and we don't want to get an uprising in Hokkaido is the real thing. Otherwise, maybe resettlement would be the way to go. Um, it seems right now, the way the game is currently balanced, that exploitation is just much better. Okay, now we are working on our first tooling workshop. When that completes, we'll turn on some sawmills to create demand for tools. This will allow them to get fully occupied so that we can do the iron mines and then turn on pig iron tools to switch the production method away from the petite bourgeoisie. Okay, so let's just take a quick look. Russia's cooperative, very nice, and now we can improve relations with the UK. Eventually, we will want to colonize Hokkaido and uh, Sakhalin. The reason for this is... Oop, did we complete? No, okay. 
we still got a ways to go. The reason for wanting to colonize both of these, if we take a look at the strategic region map, that's all of Japan. If we have all of Japan, no one will have an inherent region and interest in our region. If Russia colonizes uh, Sakhalin, or Sakhalin, however it's pronounced, uh, then they will always have an interest in our region and they will be sticking their finger in our pie, and we don't want that. So we could just do, ooh, this is a really good one. So I always click the plus prestige in this uh, situation. Especially because our enactment chance is so high anyways, and early prestige on unrecognized powers is real nice, especially because we don't have the military. Because if we take a look, is prestige till the end of the game? That's uh, plus 25 prestige relative to what we have, so that's a big deal. Okay. Just waiting on this tooling workshop to finish, and then we'll crank everything up. Now. If you want, you can kind of lower taxes and then raise them and micromanage it. In general, I like to be running a slight deficit, unless I am in the bottom quarter, in which case I like to be running a slight surplus of uh, having money. You can deficit spend, though. It's probably decent on Japan, uh, but uh, I'm not hyper comfortable doing it. Although I really like building. Which is a big reason why we deleted most of the military. Because look at this. Only 2k, and we're overpaying them. Chef's kiss. If we take a look in here, they love us. Plus 20. Big happy. So they will be generating loyalists. So are the petite bourgeoisie and industrialists. Largely because most of what we're doing is going to be empowering them. Hmm. <laughs> Intelligentsia is not happy with us. That's okay for now. They will be very happy later. We are still losing major unrecognized power status. Not a big deal. We can always build either the military or navy back up if we want more declared interests from that. We will crank up the speed a little bit. Because the next thing is we just need that tooling workshop to finish. And then we will... Or this to pass, or to get a tech. It's kind of the three things we're waiting for. Uh, in order to keep moving things along. Alright, we're going to go into our production methods. And we need to create a demand for tools, otherwise the tooling workshop will never employ anyone. So we're just going to turn on a little bit of this, which notably will make our construction cheaper because we will produce more wood. <coughs> I believe the current input on... Let's double check the current input. Ooh, another thing. Almost forgot about this. Switch to secular administration on everything and free churches. This helps to empower the intelligentsia over the other groups. Now, we finished our tooling workshop here, and we want to make sure that it just keeps employing and working its way up. Uh, if it stops being profitable, we will turn on another sawmill, and this is kind of how we'll look at it. It did turn unprofitable. We will turn on another sawmill. We don't want to turn on too much because we don't want to tank our wood. But this is kind of how we'll look at things. After this, we are going to need more wood, because we are going to build more construction and then build more wood. But yeah, this is the this is the stat you really want to get high, because more construction allows you to build more buildings. You can emphasize those buildings towards industrialization and away from all the farming. The farming empowers the landowners etc. Uh, also, you'll have insufficient taxation capacity because you have huge pops and not enough to tax them, so that's not a problem. Don't focus on that early. Once you eventually build into that, you'll feel good. Ooh, professional army advanced, did not pass. A little bit of bad luck, but we have a jingoist start, which is just incredibly strong. Looks like Great Xing has bigger problems than us to worry about. And we're going to take a look at how the... So the employment is good, but it's not profitable. So as this other tooling workshop finishes, 
we will turn on another one. Often when you're doing your own isolated economy, it requires this piecemeal turning on type thing. So right as the tooling workshop finishes, we're going to turn on more hardwood production. Oop, not that one, I mean. We're going to turn on the sawmills. What did I even queue up? Is it plus six? Oh, it's more construction centers, of course. My very favorite thing. Doom, 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 doom. Finish, please. All right, we got colonization. I'm just gonna, and we finished. I'm gonna turn on all the sawmills which will get us a lot more wood at the cost of some tools. Okay, so now we have a little bit of a choice because we're getting that spread on cotton gin anyways. We could go atmospheric engine straight away, except for this is a tier two tech and you have a malice if there's not a tier one research. So another thing we could do is we could go academia if we want to kind of min-max utilizing this gnat spread. Um, it's a little bit of a choice. I think I will go Academia. And then finish up Cotton Gin, even if it hasn't been finished. Because I want to research Academia at some point in the near future anyways, and so we'll do it like that. Alright. If I didn't want ac Academia like in the near near future, we wouldn't do that. An important thing to note, we can also turn on Harvesting Tools at some point. I'm going to switch the one farm in Hokkaido to make wine. This is another way to increase the demand for tools. Uh, this is just a labor-saving one, and since we have really high pops in a lot of areas, I'm uncertain the labor-saving is the best, although it will save you a little bit of money, but this is not a lot of increase in profitability, and the profitability is going to the landowners, which is just going to make them more powerful, so we don't necessarily want to increase their profits, so we will avoid turning this on because we can use our tools or production better elsewhere. If we turn these on, we we'll might have to make another tooling workshop just to do it. It's not even profitable for the rice farm, and so we're just going to avoid it for now. Um, yeah, you can also, there are things you can do in order to have, like, farms and also force them to be less profitable. Like, one example is to artificially increase the price of fertilizer and then make them use fertilizer as an input. Because they're using fertilizer, they will produce more crops, but they could do so at a loss in some cases. Yikes, we are getting close up here. So we are actually just going to build another construction center. We are going to kick it to the top, a couple of them, because we do not want to get to the very top of our thing. We are making too much money, and we don't want to fully fill out our gold reserves. So we're going to build two construction centers, then finish the iron mine, then switch to big iron tools. Yeah. The reason why is you save at a reduced rate, and it's just pure loss. Um, when this happens, so we would much rather decrease taxes when we start approaching this, like all the way if we have to, or even just artificially, like just pay bureaucrats more money. It, it doesn't matter. You just like you really don't want to be running it up there because it's pure waste. Uh, now, construction centers do have demand for fabric, but it's not particularly high. And what we will look to do is we will look to build cotton plantations in unincorporated states. I think we can increase the speed a little bit, because we're chugging quite right along. <laughs> oh, I wanted to say quite and right at the same time. This line's not straight up yet. What's wrong? Um, it'll be a while before it's straight up. So the construction centers are going to make us make less money, which is exactly what we want right now. We are actually wanting to run a deficit, but we can't efficiently build enough construction centers to build out a deficit. We will be able to in just a moment. Hopefully. Um, because let's take a look at the prices. I believe wood is still going to be expensive. So we probably are going to have to build more wood as well. 
But we'll build the construction centers first because it's not super expensive. Okay, now we are going to switch to pig iron tools, which will cre which will create a demand for iron. We don't want the shogunate to have any group attraction, so we will do this. And we will almost certainly pass it next time. Getting a little unlucky on these ticks. All right. Now, we are at a shortage. This is because the iron mine has to get up and running. The iron mine on its base level should have an output of 20, if I recall correctly. So it should just be an even iron price. And then once the other iron mine finishes, we'll turn the other tooling factory on like that. And then by then, the construction centers will probably have finished. Or they will be getting close to finishing. We're actually going to kick them all to the top and the iron one down to the bottom. We're going to get through these construction centers, then do the iron mines, and then do wood. Because I really don't want to hit that up there. I don't mind paying extra on the wood. Now we will look to build it in places that have a lot of peasants and aren't our capital. Also, specifically, you want to try and avoid building in Hokkaido, because Hokkaido will have gold rushes, and you will run into infrastructure problems in Hokkaido. Uh, watching this like a hawk. Really don't want to hit the cap. I think we're going to down this for a little bit until we finish this other construction center. And this is what the start is mainly about is really cranking this up so that we can build all this industrial stuff so that we can you know progress quite strongly into a sort of uh, industrialization that disempowers its landowners quite a bit yeah we're just going to keep going on the construction now we're running a deficit perfect is what we wanted We'll still complete these two construction centers because they're almost done. And then it'll be iron mine and the other thing. Now, academia we are working on. And then things are going a little bit slow. But what we can do, focus on right now, is in order to build even more and more construction, we will eventually want to switch this over to iron frame buildings. So we will want to build a lot more iron. What we can also do is we can take it, if we take a look at urban, uh, government, in, or sorry, urban centers, if you take a look, we can switch to market squares, which will import, employ more clerks who are tend to be in, okay, it's not the best PMs, but it's better than these ones. Um, and we can also turn on the lights, which will employ more engineers, which are, again, better than what we have before. And so these are things we can work towards while we wait for the techs in order to do the other stuff. I think we got the iron mine finished, so we will turn on the tooling workshop. I knew it was in Kanto, so we will do this. Pig iron tools. Now, I don't think, I think tools are too cheap. We have to increase the demand for tools, so we're going to build quite a bit of logging. We can also build iron mines to increase the demand. And the iron mines can eventually be used to expand what we got going on in terms of construction industries, as I pointed out earlier. This takes a ton of iron to switch over. All right, we have professional army. Very nice. So now we will switch. We want dedicated police. Hmm. The shogun is still opposes that. Oh, sorry, we wanted colonization. That's what we wanted. Now, it's between exploitation and this. We're going to go exploitation this time. I'm not sure what's best. Hopefully, we get a decent roll and we get to colonizing right away. We have a lot of admin left over, so we don't need to worry about it. We are going to be building more demand for the tools. We want to keep an eye out that they don't get too expensive, but right now, they're not even employed and they're staying cheap. Um, so we will be able to support a lot more logging and such for the time being. You also have a 
we're going to kick that to the top of the queue because you have a special mission as Japan at the start uh, to expand the whaling industry and all you need is an admiral, an admiral and three profitable ones of those. So we will recruit an admiral. We will prefer people who have interest groups that we like. So we're not going to go with the shogunate as much as we can. And then once that whale thing finishes and gets going, we will then get a little bit of boost in meat output, which will help standard of living a little bit. Very minor type of thing, but might as well do it if it's like a free bonus. Let's double check the radicalism. So a lot of radicals came from <laughs> being fired. Uh, the initial wave, we, we fired a bunch of samurai. Industrialists really approve of what we're doing. Hell yeah, brother. And so the academia, switching to academia definitely slows down what we're doing because what we would be trying to do is do cotton gin into lathe. And so we would be, when we finish academia, we would have finished um, the cotton gin. And see, we can choose between mortality and throughput. We're going to do throughput. And we have a nice negative number, but we have a balance of nearly 3 million, or gold reserves of 3 million, so we are going to build into that. We don't care that it's negative. We're going to uh, continue to build. Now, let's check our prices. What is expensive? Wood is expensive. So, we are going to want to keep building some more wood a little bit. When we switch over, not in Chubu, because Chubu starts out with hardwood production, and that's not quite what we want and not in the capital, because we are going to build more industry there. And we will pull these ahead of most of the logging mines. Logging camps. Or sorry, iron mines. When we switch the production method of our buildings, or our construction centers, to iron frame buildings, they will consume less wood, so that will decrease the need for wood. So I think as one of these finishes, I don't know if we can quite afford it yet, but we can raise taxes and afford it. And still be running a little bit of a deficit. Definitely like that. Don't like the legitimacy hit, though. So I think once this finishes, we might switch to some iron frame buildings. In an area where we only have one, maybe? So let's look at rural, oh wait, construction obviously. So here we only have one. We'll switch one over. This will increase the demand for iron, which right now there's very little demand for, because it's just the tooling workshops. And we'll hopefully, yeah, drive down the price of, or sorry, drive down the price of iron, or drive up the price of iron, and slightly drive down the price of wood. And then we have these two woods coming in. And then we are going to need... Oof. All right, we got colonial power. And that was one of our objectives for the hegemony. So we have to establish colonies, form alliances, and maintain subjects. We're going to make our first colony. So we will go into the diplomatic lens tab and the establish colony tab. And we will establish in Hokkaido. So now we need to take another look at laws, and here's where you could just kind of need to think about things. Local police force is something we would like to get rid of. The reason being is that local police force gives power to the shogunate, but not a whole lot. Um, National Guard is kind of okay and is kind of easy to pass, but we're not going to work on that, I don't think. Let's see. We might work on it, actually. See, now we have the thing where, in order to pass other stuff we want, we're going to need the Intelligentsia. I don't think the Intelligentsia are strong enough yet to really do much useful stuff. But when we take a look, if we look at government, and we bring them in, really slow on the law passing. So, we are going to tentatively try and pass dedicated police force. Now, this is supported by the Samurai and the Intelligentsia. But we're going to try and pass it with just the samurai. It's supported by a whole lot more, but we don't want to put the peasants or bourgeoisie in there. Um, if we get if we roll bad events, we will probably just back off of it. But we're just going to do this and see how things go. Okay. 
We're going to put a tooling workshop at the end of the logging camps to increase the demand for iron and make other stuff cheaper. All right. We're going to take a look at prices in our market. Wood and clothes. Wood is quite expensive. We're working on the wood and the clothes. And then the tools we will build into our need for tools. All right, after this, we will long-term be needing some coal. So I'm gonna build a couple coal things and then make services a little bit cheaper. A politician's died, this is important. Well, he's not an important politician yet, but let's see his ideology. So we can look at the government, exit reforming it. We now have a pacifist, so he's going to oppose colonization, so it's nice we've already passed the colonization. Mining accident? No. So we want to empower the industrialists, and it's kind of the only thing we care about right now. We are bolstering them. If you look, their clout has steadily been increasing, and if you look at the sources of clout, a lot of it comes from the wealth, which is why switching over these PMs to being privately owned is so important because the capitalists are predominantly industrialists. And so this is how you increase their clout so you can pass stuff. Okay. For half a second I thought I wasn't recording, which would have been big sad. Um, just talking to myself while playing. Let's take a look at laws because laws are going to be kind of the way we're going to try and transition forward. We want to transition maybe to landed voting. Landed voting is really easy to pass. The samurai oppose it, but what we could do is if we look at reform government, when we decide we don't want the samurai around no more, we could do something like this, which doesn't delegitimize us very much, but now we're passing stuff that the intelligentsia goes for. So if we get a bad role on local police, we're going to take the samurai out of government, like a role that makes us have to do minus chance. Perfect. And now we will go into lathes, even though it's not spreading to us anyways. Or sorry, cotton gin, because we want to get into lathes. We will also queue up oh, it's in, to this one, a university in Kansai, which will help with qualifications and to empower intellectuals. Okay, as I was saying, uh, if we fail to pass local police force on the first tick and we get a bad tick, it's only 10% chance. What we could do is we could switch from autocracy, which gives political strength just a whole bunch more to aristocrats, instead to wealth voting, or sorry, landed voting, which is easy to pass, and it gives political strength to aristocrat votes, capitalist votes, clergyman votes, and officer votes. Specifically, the officer votes and the capitalist, well, the officer votes are going to be against a lot of the reforms we want, because the samurai's bakufu uh, ideology, but the capitalist votes are going to be something we really like, so we want to keep empowering the capitalists for that. Um, the downside of passing that early is we still have the shogunate in power, and we're still going to have to keep the shogunate in power, because the monarchy is also giving us a lot of legitimacy, and that requires the head of state being in government, and this one requires the head of state being in government. So as long as we have the shogunate in government, autocracy is pretty good. If you look at landed voting, it's just 20 legitimacy. It doesn't require being in government. So... Uh, it's the, it's a timing thing in terms of when you want to switch, especially because if we look, it's a hundred less authority. So that means we got to get rid of our, one of our taxes, which means less construction, which means less burr. You always want to maximize burr, so there is that. Now we will take a look at prices. I think iron is quite cheap, and we get dedicated police force. I'm very lucky to have gotten this just on this roll, because now... Not only do I think the dedicated police force institution is just better, um, but we are also going to be able to take the samurai out of government because the reforms that we can pass with them, we've already passed all of them, largely on the back of the shogunate having the jingoist ideology, so it let us push through the first two really early, which is professional army and colonizing. Okay, so now we're going to take them out of government. We're going to put the intelligentsia in government. Eventually, we want the unholy alliance, but we can't put it in the industrialist yet. So now, if you look, it opens up a whole bunch of other ones because different support. 
Appointed bureaucrats would be really good because it increases intelligentsia political strength as opposed to hereditary bureaucrats. Unfortunately, really tough to pass through a strong shogunate. So this might just be chill mode for a little while. We could go for landed voting because the shogunate doesn't oppose it that much, but I think it's slightly too early. So we might go for this in a couple of years, even if we're just waiting around in the meantime. Just kind of double checking everything. This is the one we eventually want to go for. I don't think we can go for... Sorry. We can go for agrarianism and still have serfdom, but uh, we don't have the support for it right now. And we would like private schools. And the Buddhist monks oppose this, but private schools give intelligentsia political strength. And remember, you want to empower the intelligentsia and the industrialists. So we will go for this. It will, I think, radicalize them? No, they just oppose it. So we will go for that. And we will be running out of bureaucracy. Okay, so we are going to need to make a little bit of a pivot to construct some government admins. And all these places have insufficient taxation capacity. So we don't really mind building extras, especially because we could increase our colonial rate as well. So we'll actually get rid of the coal mines. Also, the government administrations will, uh, will employ people that are used by the intelligentsia. Okay, nice, we get more cotton, and now we are going to get lathe. Whoa, that's so zoomed in. Lathe, the important thing is allows us to switch PMs. We are going to cancel this one. And we are not necessarily expecting to get private schools, but the government admins can still be useful because we can enact a higher level colonial affairs, which I think would be reasonable. Although we're spreading in Hokkaido pretty good. We don't want to get a native uprising. This is like the, kind of one of the only places we don't want to get a native uprising, but that would be unfortunate if we got one. I think the price of iron... Hmm. We could turn on another tier one uh, construction center to the next level. Because I think each tier is 50 iron consumption. So if we look in here, uh, but we don't, oh, we do have one. Yeah, it's 50 iron consumption. Although I think when this next iron finishes, we could turn on a tier two. That might be better to do. But that will obviously shoot up the price of iron, which will increase uh, some stuff. But it will be, it will take less wooden fabric, so it'll help bring down the price of wood. So we're gonna wait for that iron mine to finish, or get really close, and then we're gonna switch. Okay. Now, still gonna have that bureaucratic shortfall, but not super pressing, because we only have an 8.2% uh, success chance on enacting private schools. Once we have this, though, it'll help make the intelligentsia a lot stronger, and then maybe we can go for something else. If we go for banning serfdom immediately, they only s see they minus 20 oppose, but it won't radicalize either one of them, but I don't think it passes through this level of opposition very easily, although, once again, we want to have both the industrialists and intelligentsia in government for this. And currently, the industrialists are still marginalized. They're coming up, though. If we take a look at the IG... Oh, can't we look at just how quickly they've been coming up? Where do we look at that? We'll see it once they become five or more, but... And this law... Being able to put in schools is why we get the academia, because I believe that unlocks it. If we look at the society tech, academia unlocks private schools, which is what we are trying to pass. The duel. So anytime you get in the duel event, you want to look at both playable and see if they have a character trait you care about. So, oops. 
Didn't we change the setting to be no nudity? I think we did. I mean, it didn't show his junk, it just showed... Yeah, we have it on show no nudity, but he's semi-nudist, so it just shows what's not there. Okay, so he is the heir apparent, and he has traditionalist ideology, which uh, we kind of don't like, and he is trade unionist, so let's let them fight. And we have a new heir. And he's a pacifist Buddhist monk. Not ideal, but okay. But I mean, at least he's not a landowner, I guess. Or not a shogunate guy. Alright, this will increase the price of paper. I think we ignore that increase for a little while. Hopefully we roll a good event in private schools in just a moment here. That would go a long way to empowering the intelligentsia. Especially because it... So we have a lot of samurai approval, and this only lasts five years, so we can afford to do this. A lot of that samurai approval... Ooh, up on the radicals, but up on these guys too. A lot of the samurai approval that we're just getting for free... Uh, we did not want to get the native uprising. Unfortunate. We'll just mobilize all of our guys and put it down. This means we will have more radicals in Hokkaido than we otherwise would. And it's just sad because we're like 50 days away from finishing it anyways. But oh well. It also means our colony is now done. So we will switch and put a colony there. And we will also go into diplomacy and change our declared interest away from Great Britain and the Patagonia instead, because we'll colonize down there. <coughs> because there is no malaria malice and you can get gold. Okay, in terms of construction, we have to add a little bit more to this. So we'll take a look at what's expensive in the market and try and do something about it. Well, that's what's cheap. Now, we want to. I think we want to make more iron, and then turn on iron frame buildings, and that will decrease the wood price. Actually, let's just decrease the wood price. So, again, Chubu is making hardwood, which we could build up in Chubu, but it will give us disproportionately less softwood. As on a per PM basis. We will need this wood eventually. We're also going to build... I don't want to build the textile mills just yet, because we are still researching lathes. I guess we can get ready to finish lathes, so building textile mills isn't terrible. I believe Kanto and Chubo, Chubu have the most population. Let's see who has the most peasants. I guess I'll just do one and one. And we are going to have a... Oh, they backed down. Nice. So now this is fully unlocked Hokkaido, which notably has a lot more infrastructure capacity. So now we can be free to build there a little bit. Uh, and I think we're going to mainly going to want to use them for coal. Now we are going to have a big administrative surplus, but that's okay, because... We are enacting private schools, and running a deficit in this is generally really bad. We do have to watch our money, though. So actually, we are going to kick one of these to the bottom, even, or let's kick both of them to the bottom. They're both almost completed, but once we, they complete, we'll have to pay for them. And this way, we can just kick them to the top whenever we need them and finish them then. Alright. I think we do... Are tools cheap? We want tools cheap when the tech we're researching finishes. 
because that tech is going to, lathes is going to make us use tools. It's also going to make us use dies, but dies are currently cheap in our market. We're also getting that spread, so this is going to finish really quick. Um, also need leaded glass, so we will make a lead mine. Why don't we make it down here? Haven't built there in a while. And kick it up a little bit. And then the consumer goods should help a little bit with this, but we're not too, too concerned with this right now. If you notice, if we look at the radicalism map, there should be a lot in Hokkaido, I believe. Oh, it's not too bad. Maybe because they back down, it's not too bad. Um, but we are now colonizing up here. And we will not build anything here because we do not have a port here. So we'll just let them be on subsistence farms. That'll be okay for us for now. An important thing to note is we cannot, uh, we have zero, zero navy at the start, which prevents us from doing any sort of landing mission on anyone. But if we already have a front, we can send people to the front. Buddhist monks are denying us education access. They are not happy about this. But we will keep trying to push it through, especially because if we take a look, the landowners, or the shogunate, are still really powerful. They have a lot of clout. Even though the clout's been coming down, it's going. we can't directly oppose them in a law yet, but we can try and do stuff that will empower others or, you know, take them down just a little bit without making them too upset. Uh, if the... We could just try and abolish serfdom next if the samurai were a bit weaker, I think. I think if we have maybe 30 versus 30 support versus 40 oppo then maybe we could go for it or 25 support versus 40 oppo but 25 in gov but we still need to get the industrialists in the government we could do it right now because they're finally uh not oppressed but this would kill our legitimacy because uh, there's they don't have enough clout i think it would be most legitimate if we yeah just took everyone but the shogunate out which we're not doing because we need the one pushing this reform, for example, is the Intelligentsia. And legitimacy makes the thing tick faster. It's possible if the if the Industrials were way, were way more powerful, we would include them to pass this law, but they're not yet. And so we might be stuck around trying to pass this law for quite some time before we start moving to something more substantive. Let's take a look. Still do a, we can go a little bit faster, I think, or a lot a bit faster. Uh, we are getting ready to switch to lathes in our PMs, and we will be switching on some usage of coal. Curriculum disagreements, unfortunate. Hmm, minus enactment chance or minus enactment time. Well, we have almost no enactment chance, so we're going to go minus enactment time. But this might mean we have to abandon this for something else. Alright, we got lathes, and so we are going to want to switch over the PMs. Now, important thing to note, if we look, merchant guild owned, dye workshops, privately owned. So we're putting hands in the, we're putting hands in the power of the capitalist. We're putting ca power in the hands of the capitalist by switching over the PMs. Now we also have lead, we're going to put the lead at the top of the queue, because that will allow us to switch some of the glass over, although I think we do need two lead farms. Now we have, we want to go atmospheric engine. I believe egalitarianism can go for, allow us to go for some laws, but I don't think those are the ones we immediately want right now. And I think we actually will need two lead farms in order to support all of our starting glass at the start of the game. So we will do a second one. Although, this furniture manufacturer was pretty close to done. So we'll do that. And we'll kind of juggle the government admins at the bottom of the queue for a while. Notably, are starting to eat down quite a bit, so we will increase taxes. And we'll look to just have those taxes up until we can get... 
until we can stabilize a little bit, but we'll keep in mind that we want to keep them down or get them down a, a little bit. Notably, we're increasing taxes just immediately after changing the PMs that make more furniture. And so they should get a little bit of a trade-off. Now we got a tech that gave us more authority. We're gonna go, and now that we're starting to put a lot of our production in Kansai, if we look, we have all this, the paper, the tailors, the tooling workshops have been there. We are gonna go to edicts, or decrees, because it's decrees in this game, and we're gonna encourage manufacturing there, and we'll try and make this a manufacturing hub. <clears throat> all right. And hopefully the standard of living actually rises because we're making the goods cheaper at least the clothes and the furniture. The wood too, eventually. In fact, why don't we put that at the end of the queue and up the speed a little bit? Because you'll kind of always need more wood. And then we will kick the government admins below the wood. And then if we happen to just spike the law, then we will Wonderful idea. We would love more universities. And it gives interest group pop uh, expansion. I think this event fires when you have a lot of rich industrialists. And so we kind of do. All right. Low market access and isolate is like the same thing. Our expensive government good is iron. Interesting. Then we will go for iron instead of the wood or before the wood. Or we will kind of interlace it. Let's kick these government admins back to the bottom. And we will just alternate between iron and wood. Okay, the lead mine is about to finish. Now we need to create a demand for lead. Because currently there's no demand for lead. If we take a look at the glass works. We switch over to leaded glass. It's going to use 20... This one is going to use 20, so that'll be equal demand. Notice, they're now privately owned, so they're owned by the industrialists, will empower the industrialists. These will empower more the petite bourgeoisie. If we take a look at government power over time, the petite bourgeoisie will be, or that's the Buddhist monks. The petite bourgeoisie are not even powerful anymore. They're gone, they're not even on the graph. They're marginalized. So, they're happy with us, but they're marginalized. So this is what we what we get by switching over, because these two together will be what we use to pass uh, the major reforms, the unholy alliance. Now, it will be kind of hard. This form alliance is quite powerful because we have to ally with two major powers. Um, I thought you had to be a major power and then do it, but it seems like you just have to ally with major powers. And once that, once that lead finishes, we will turn on the rest of our glassworks onto leaded glass. And it does. And now that that coal is finishing, we need to create a demand for coal. Currently, there's no demand in the market. It will produce around 20. And switching to streetlights will consume about 20. So it'll be even. And it'll produce more services. Hmm... So we are going to get negative enactment chance no matter what. So we are going to abandon trying to pass this law for now and take the one that's less punishing. So we're going to go in laws and we're going to cancel. And then we're going to see what we can do. Um, I don't think there's a whole lot we could do. We're nowhere near being able to go for this at the start, although it is promising to note that they are not radicalizing off of this. Um, but we don't have enough power. You know, just the 8%. Uh, it's, we would have to get really lucky. I'd much rather go for this, but I still don't think we have enough power for that. Could go for landed voting now. Since we already have taxes up, and we cannot increase taxes once we have to revoke one of the consumption taxes, off the loss of authority, I think we're just going to sit tight for now on our laws, wait the 11 months, and try and pass private schools again. Let's double check and make sure that they are secular. They are not. 
So we'll go into the buildings because we didn't have these before and make sure that they are secular academia because we want intelligentsia. So if we take a look, academics tend to be from, well, they tend to be Buddhist monk at this point, but they also more intelligentsia that if we look at clergymen, they're much more Buddhist monkey. So that will help us pass some stuff even more. Yeah, we do not, I don't even think we want right of assembly at this juncture. And we are prepping for atmospheric engines, so we will need to develop a bit of a coal industry. What we, will, we are going to try and do is make coal, but make it cheap. Kick that to the bottom. I'm gonna keep juggling it down there. I'm gonna take a look. What in our market's expensive? Hardwood. We can switch over to hardwood production in somewhere if we wanted. Some place that does not have too much wood production. Or I guess we could just add in Chubu. This will produce more softwood as well. And we'll cancel a couple of these and get back to alternating. And I believe, let's take a look. Clothes aren't too bad. Furniture is not too bad. Fruit, we don't really care if it goes high because they will just eat substitute goods like meat. Although, we eventually will want food industries. So why don't we put one of those in Kansai? And kind of work on that very close to next. Eventually we will get canning. The good thing about the food industry is it can help increase quality of life through like a kind of roundabout way. If we take a look. So let's double check what you have to be. You have to be sweeteners or baking powder. So we will use sweeteners. Now what the food does is the food takes in grain and sugar and puts out alcohol and uh, groceries. After you get canning, it takes in fish and grain. And what you want to do is, uh, the middle and upper class don't like fish as much just regular, but they like groceries and they'll eat groceries. And so what you do is you create a food industry and then you get more fish. The upper and middle class will eat less grain, leaving it for your poor pops so their standard of living rises better. And then what you also get is the upper and middle class are also more satisfied with the canneries and you get to produce more fish instead of grain and the reason why this is important because if we take a look here these are the merchant guilds and these are privately owned by aristocrats who are predominantly shogunate so just like little tweaks to try and do things like just like how we're not using tools even though it would make them more profitable because it only makes them more profitable by decreasing the laborers. It doesn't make them more profitable by increasing output, so we don't want to use those PMs to, because they'll just empower the shogunate at this point. I think we could go up to speed four. And let's see when we can pass this law again. Wait another six months. Okay. So it's currently October, so later. Gotta try and keep an eye for when I finish this. In fact, I will actually start the colonization of the other place because uh, I can be a little bit bad about that.
We'll start both. Now, let's look at government prices. I think coal is really cheap. Where is coal? Oh, nope, it's even. Okay. Coal's going to get cheap, but we want it to be cheap when we finish Atmospheric Engine Pump. Oh, they're not as happy with us now. Big sad. Price report. Nothing big to report. Starting to run a bigger surplus. Now we are kind of in a bit of a quandary where we either want to do the, decrease this or sad. Uh, can go either way, or we can look to increase construction. I don't know. I like to go burr. So, if we do this... Is going to decrease the price of wood. We will need more iron. We're building more iron. Also building more wood. But I really like construction, so... We're doing it. And now we will put a bit more iron in here. is now expensive, but each each one we turn on, the longer, the bigger and bigger our total market of iron is, the less volatile turning one of those on is, which is uh, kind of a big thing we want. Fabric is getting expensive. We are still going to hold off on making fabric cheaper because it will empower the landowners. If we look at agriculture and we look at the cotton plantation, we can't really see too well in here. If we look, if we go rural, where are we getting our fabric from? Are we really getting it from livestock only? Interesting. Now this is owned by aristocrats as well, so we could make them make more meat by using tools, and this one would be more reasonable, but we're still not going to do it. We don't want to make them more money. little bit of a waiting game. Now once one of these coals finishes, we're gonna go into urban, and we're gonna turn on like another 20 or so worth of lights. Oop. My kingdom for an ability to click. Which will make services cheaper. Now I think what we want to do is actually Maybe make some more glass and make them focus on glass production. And we could start turning on market stalls, although we, again, do want to expand the coal mines a little bit. Which we are doing. The reason why is atmospheric engine pump, it requires coal. We're going to turn it on, which will make our coal mines more profitable. And so the transition will just be much easier if we already have a bunch of coal industry built up. So. And we're back to making money, even though we just turned on more construction. Hot damn. An important thing to note is that when standard of living drops, you get more radicals you lose loyalists, but another thing happens is all your government wages go down because government wages are calculated based on average wage in your country, so if your average standard of living is down uh, and average wage is down, then it drives down the uh, price of your government wages, which is just something to think about. Again, as this finishes, we'll look to turn on uh, another 20. Well, we'll turn on two tens terms of consumption, because each one makes roughly 10. And then the, when the last one turns on, we can turn on the, another 20 in Shukogu. And then that'll be a nice spot to transition. Groceries are kind of expensive. Let's take a look at that real quick. 
fully employed and they're making booze and groceries. Now, one thing that's interesting is when you have a two output thing, like something I've noticed with Muslim countries, which I've played as several of, when you have a two output thing, what you can do is you can export one of the outputs to drive down the price of the other one. So when you have Muslim countries that have taboo against liquor, you can use the pot stills because the production method is more productive overall, export the booze, and then benefit from cheap groceries while still having the grocers be as profitable as possible. Has it been six months? It has. We're going to try for private schools again. We're also going to take a look at what would happen if we put uh, the Unholy Alliance in government, because they've gotten a bit stronger. Okay, we can't quite support it. We might be able to support it if we had uh, landed voting. I still don't think it's... I think it's a little early for that. Let's take a look at what's expensive. Groceries and iron. Now, groceries is not end of the world if it's expensive, because, uh... They will just use substitute goods. But if we bring down the price of iron, we will be making more money because we are the ones buying the iron for the construction centers. So we will prioritize that a little bit more. I'm putting it at the top of the queue. Although let's put the glass mine over that. Actually, let's do this. Iron's coming down in price. Clothes are going up in price. As iron comes down, that is our biggest expense overall. Look, we're spending 12k on iron, and we don't, we don't even have very many of our things set to iron frame buildings. So it's a like monstrous uh, expense. Alright, if we go in urban, we can switch over our two in Chicago. As this coal mine finishes, and then we will wait until we hit atmospheric engine pump. Which will produce for us a lot more iron, lead, and everything else. Um, so, to that end... I think we want... Hmm... Let's take a look. What your what's expensive for you guys that you are consuming? You're having some standard living problems. Clothes and wood. So let's build a bunch more logging and some clothes. Uh, in the meantime, that'll be hardwood. And then some clothes. We'll do it in Kanto, because there's no clothing industry in Kanto. We'll kick the government admins to the bottom. And this will kind of be our queue moving forward. Um, this has been a bit of just, like, starting steps and kind of what to focus on, what to think of. I'll just really quick rule through some various things that were important. First thing, uh, we kept re-rolling until we got a shogunate leader that was a jingoist because this allowed us to pass uh, professional army, which disempowered the landowners relative to peasant levies, and colonial exploitation both very quickly, which allows us to colonize up here before Russia can get to it, which is kind of an important feature. The other thing we did that was a bit unique, or the other thing we did in terms of our economy and our authority expenditure is we immediately started bolstering the industrials and the intelligentsia because these are the two that we're going to use to take down the shogunate or take down the laws that this is important to the shogunate. We also put in a ton of consumption taxes. We are just trying to just crank out as much building as possible. And very importantly, we also deleted almost all of our military except for a little bit in the capital. By keeping the amount in the capital, if we have a civil war, we will have a ton of people, uh, we will have our capital force, so we will have a bigger force, generally speaking. Uh, although I think we're going to try and avoid a civil war. We could provoke one, though, if we wanted to. We might end up provoking one when we just, like, we're going to go from, like, 0 to 100 in terms of revoking shogunate laws. And so when we go to 100, we're probably going to make them pretty pissed and start a civil war. But by then, we're looking to have the barracks with, like, line infantry and 
uh, mobile artillery, and so they shouldn't be able to stop our just single 20 stack. Um, for ports, we switched everything to Anchorage. This is because we don't have any use of convoys. And then also, in our budget, we tried to keep taxation level normal for a little bit, but we upped it so we could have more construction, because go burr. And then also, we increased military wages. This is probably... So, <laughs> the bonuses you get from this ought to be in proportion to your like entire economy, but we're getting plus five samurai approval, and the samurai are getting paid more, which is going to make them relatively more loyalist. Like you see, we're getting plus two approval from loyalists, although we are also getting radicals. Um, and this helps us pass laws without the samurai getting pissed. And it is very, very, very cheap because we have a very, very small military. And so these were kind of like the important features in terms of uh, kind of economy and political organization. In terms of tech, um, the important ones to go for is if you have a jingoist, you want to go colonization right, right away. That way you can switch laws as fast as possible. And then the other law that's pretty important in society is academia because you want, kind of want to get rolling on both your universities and it also unlocks, let's see, it unlocks private schools in the education system. If we look at the laws, we're trying to pass private schools now. Private schools empowers intelligentsia and it empowers intelligentsia based on level. So this can be a good way to crank up the intelligentsia. Even though public schools are like better overall, just for like getting rid of serfdom and getting rid of traditionalism and land-based tax, private's probably better. Okay, um, oh, I lost my train of thought. Private schools. Ah, where was I going? We were enacting private schools. We were summarizing. Okay, we're summarizing the tech. So these are the two techs that are particularly important early on. Egalitarianism later allows you to do, you know, multiculturalism, which actually probably isn't very important to you. It's important in a lot of runs I've done, but not very important. Um, let's see. Okay, yeah. After that, it is largely switching, going to cotton gin, lathe and then atmospheric engine pump, which is kind of where we're at right now. Canneries is also good, as is mechanical tools eventually. Intensive agriculture, not that great. The reason why is that it unlocks uh, production methods that empower the land or that make the landowners more profitable. So you can kind of wait on this, but you actually will turn on the production methods if you get them, but this is less important. The reason why lathe is important, for example, is it allows you to use dyed workshops, which are owned by industrialists, a cap aka capitalists, more so than shopkeepers, which are tend to be more petite bourgeoisie. It also does the same thing for furniture and for glassworks. And so by doing this, you are trying to empower the other half of the Unholy Alliance, the industrialists, which if you notice, have just been cranking up since the start. Um, let's see. Um, so this is why you go lathe, atmospheric engine, same idea for the mines. All of our mines right now are uh, owned by, if we take a look, in the rural, they are owned by shopkeepers. We switch to private owned after we get the atmospheric engine pump. So this, is, these, this flight of tax is really important for switching to industrialization. Also, pretty soon here, we are gonna be encountering difficulties in terms of our infrastructure amount. So we will probably go mechanical tools, which allows for precision tools, which is kind of nice, um, and allows for steel tools so we can start our steel industry up, use it to make more tools, and then also allows us to use the PM for paper mills, because if we take a look at paper mills right now, if I recall correctly, they start out, yeah, so we're still using Merchant Guild paper mills, so it will allow us to use uh, Merchant Guilds that are, or sorry, paper mills that are more industrialist oriented by using, getting mechanical tools, but it also allows us to get steel started and then switch to railways. Let's double check if slaughterhouses, uh, I think that the cattle industry is just always going to be, uh, yeah, so the cattle industry is always going to be, almost all the rural stuff that's agriculture based is going to be uh, owned by the aristocrats, aka the shogunate, which we don't want. Although one benefit of colonizing early is once we get an overseas colony, which I think we might even have one in Patagonia, yeah, so down here. So for here, for example, we can build wheat farms down here, and the wheat farms will not contribute very much in 
terms of clout because they are unincorporated. So all of our farming we are going to do, we're going to want to do overseas. We will actually add a couple of stuff and kick this to the bottom. Because one problem in terms of standard of living is grain getting expensive. Although grain's not too bad. Grain's actually cheap, so we don't need to do this now, but this is something we could do uh, if we want to decrease the price of grain. We're going to do all of the production overseas because we're trying to use production methods that disempower the landowners as much as possible. If we take a look, like for example, at the Shogunate. Ah, uh, how do I get to the menu I want? I forget to get to how to get to the thing where it tells you why they're powerful or why they have what power they have. But if you look, these guys are mostly capitalists, some shopkeepers, engineers, most of the power is coming from the capitalists. And so you want to get the capitalists happy. And then another thing, and this is probably the final thing to note, for your production methods, make sure you switch uh, the urban centers, the government admins, and the universities. Make sure you switch them secular, because this will appoint more bureaucrats instead of clergy, more academics instead of clergy, and this last one, more clerks instead of clergy. Okay, uh, hopefully this has been a pretty good introduction in terms of how to start, um, as well as just like a quick reminder rundown of all the other things that are important. If you like this video, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, do all the YouTube algorithm stuff, and have a good day.